What's the word, y'all? It, it had not even been three hours since I posted the video about Bradley Beal. And, and it, I, I said it felt like Beal to the Miami Heat is an inevitability. He, he just got traded. Hold on, hold on. He just got traded <laughs> to the... <laughs> to the Phoenix Suns. I'm about to private the video from earlier. It, it, it's irrelevant right now. It happened. Chris Paul, Landry Shaman, a handful of second round picks. What does that mean? Nobody knows. Is it two? Is it 12? And then multiple pick swaps. You thought the demonstrator for Kevin Durant a couple months ago was going all in with all the pick swaps and stuff they did? Nope, this is it. Chris Paul is now on the Washington Wizards, so I'm assuming he's not going to play next season. But, but who knows? Chris Paul has a history of going to random teams and being okay enough to help them make the playoffs. Wouldn't that be a timeline of he helps the Wizards get to the playoffs uh, before Bradley Beal and Porzingis and Kuzma could? I am I'm at a loss. I don't know how to feel. I don't, on paper, really like the idea of Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant. Obviously, the talent is going to be the Bradley Beal is, is really, really good. And now that he's your third option instead of a first option, he's probably going to be even better. But I still feel like fundamentally this Suns roster is going to be missing a lot of stuff. Devin Booker had, has played a ton of on-ball point guard type uh, roles over the last couple seasons. And then Bradley Beal has also played those type of roles in Washington. But I, I can't lie. The idea of having a real, real point guard for this type of team Feel, feels great, but it's it's not gonna happen at this point. Yeah, let me go ahead and private that video because it's not it's not even relevant. I can already watch. I'm gonna look at the comment section real quick. Then you find out he's traded for Chris Paul. Just got traded a few minutes ago. As I'm watching the video, who's here after the trade? Well, damn, Beal to the Suns. All right, all right, I get it. And a part of that video that I cut out is like I, I said in that video, watch me drop this video, and then he gets traded in 24 hours. It wasn't even 24. I'm unlistening right now. Okay, anyway. We knew that Bradley Beal had the ultimate amount of leverage with his no trade clause, and the Suns and the Miami Heat were the two finalists. I felt like the Miami Heat were going to get their guy, and there was another report or rumor that was saying like, hey, if they could get Bradley Beal without giving up Tyler Hero, they was going to throw Tyler Hero on a different trade, and now this Miami Heat team looks even, even more different. And I don't know what the backup plan for the Miami Heat. That's not really relevant. We need to talk about these Suns, because they were able to keep DeAndre Aiden now are they going to move DeAndre Aiden in a different trade to maybe help out that depth hope hopefully because as of right now it's, it's Beal Booker Okogi Durant and Aiden then the bench has C C Cameron Payne uh Tory Craig they, they, these are people some of these people are free agents this roster is about to be extremely top heavy which has worked in some cases throughout history but more likely than not unless you got three of the greatest of all time on your roster you need depth you just do and I'm assuming that the, their idea is, hey, we're going to put together this team. Maybe we move Aiden in a little bit. I guess there's yet to be seen. But if we're not going to move them, we're getting a bunch of players in free agency that are looking for that ring, some ring chasing dudes, a la uh, uh, Ray Allen back in the Heatle days, uh, stuff, stuff like that. But if you're looking at the available guys, how many of these dudes are about to take a minimum or close to a minimum to come play on this team? Uh, can, can, you, can you get Dwight Powell to, to say that? Can you get... I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. Matt Ishby immediately came in and within six months, six months of owning the team, four months of owning the team, the man has pulled off two of the biggest trades in recent history. The dude, the second biggest contract in the, in the current NBA and in NBA history just got traded. And he also traded for Kevin Durant. He has done some great things. Um, and part of that is like the TV right stuff. Shout out to Matt Ishby for that. But I'm a little bit afraid that now that he's here, he's going to continue to do this and this and this, these big old moves. And ultimately, it might set them back. Now, again, you do have Kevin, you do have Devin, and you do have Brad. So so that's talent. But I, I'm a little bit afraid, man. I'm just a little bit afraid. Because Kevin, again, knock on wood, because we want everybody to be healthy. Over the last couple of seasons, has had in injury history. And it's, oh, man, I just don't know how to, I don't know how to feel. For the Washington Wizards standpoint, um, I'm very curious to see how their fans are feeling. And we knew, we had an idea that the that the Bradley Beal trade wasn't going to net you a bunch of stuff. And and the stuff that you're basically getting is Landry Shaman, who's a part of another big deal. And then some seconds and a swap or two down the line. But bigger than all, you wash your hands of the Bradley Beal stuff. And he was cool for your organization for the time being. I mean, he was one of the longest tenured individual, you know, single team guys left in the league with him being drafted as far, what year, what year is that? 2012. Boy, that's, it don't even feel like that long. So one of the longest tenured single team dudes, and now he's a part of the Phoenix Suns. Um, so it should be interesting, man. 
Hey, listen, we only a couple days into free agency. The NBA Finals just wrapped up a couple nights ago, and here we are seeing an all-star caliber. I know it's been a few years, but all-star caliber player getting traded, and now we have a new big three. I can already see the conversations. I ain't looked on Twitter other than see the actual tweet, but the discourse around it is that Kevin can't just play ball, um, and that he needs a big, he needs a big three to be formed or a super team to be formed. And I'm be honest with you. Uh, based on what they roster look like right now, I'd be hesitant to call them a super team. I need to see the rest of the things that they do, but they do have top end talent out of this world. I would say if I were gonna, if I was gonna make a prediction, that it's uh, seven, 70 30 that DeAndre Aiden does get traded. I'm just saying based on their lack of depth. I don't know how you can look at this roster and be like, yeah, this is the, this is how we're running it. Um, it just feels like there's a deal to be made for multiple role players for sending DeAndre Aiden to a team that maybe wants to get younger or wants to take a chance on the center that may have lost a little bit of value this season. I, I don't really know. Like, I, let me look at the teams again, NBA standings, and, and try to figure out what team could give you some quality pieces to help build out this team in exchange for DeAndre Aiden. Oh, yep. Yeah. The first thing I do when I check my phone is see a tweet of Kevin with Russ and James. And then him with the with the Warriors dudes, and then him with James and Kyrie, and now with with Beal and, <laughs> and Book. Oh man. Okay, back back to what I was talking about with the DeAndre Aiden stuff. I don't know. I'm 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 looking at teams. The center, the center position is one of the deeper positions in basketball. Um, so it's it's hard to say who would who would make that happen. Now it's making me think that he's not going to get traded. This is how they're going to roll the balls out this season. I I don't really know. Um, I'm curious. I mean, this just opens up Chris Paul because I'm assuming, based on what I know right now, which is basically just we'll just tweet that um, that we will see Chris Paul get waived, bought out, whatever, whatever the the rationalization of the the words are. And now he's one of the hot commodities on the market because there are going to be teams that are looking for a point guard caliber play. And though he's not the same Chris Paul from two years ago that was an All Star, he's still okay enough to to be the floor general. I always say this about Chris Paul: even when his individual performances are going to go down, the one thing that's going to be the same is this up here. He's going to think the game. He's going to get you in the right spots. He's going to make the passes. Um, and I felt like the type of point guard that you need over there in Phoenix. They thought otherwise, which we'll see if that's true. I mean, right now, this team has four max contracts guaranteed on their roster and nothing, nothing else. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm be honest with you. I'm completely shocked. I'm, we'll see exactly what unfolds. But let me know what you think about the Bradley Beal trade to the Phoenix Suns. Are you, uh, do you think it's a dub? You think it's an L? I mean, I guess only time will tell. We talked about in the last video that Bradley Beal, when he's catching the shoot, is a 40% three-point shooter still. So th there are some worlds, obviously, where this works because talent finds a way. But boy, oh boy, they super thin right now. Full offseason ahead, so maybe they make some more adjustments, but we'll see.